The first thing you will probably hear from your friends and family when you announce them that you are about to learn some new language is that chosen language is easy or hard. In fact, no comment about which language is easy or hard is entirely accurate. The most important factor determining whatever language is easy or hard for you is not so much the language itself as the matter of where you are coming from. For instance, Arabic is not very hard if you happen to be a Hebrew. Icelandic is pretty easy if you speak Danish and Russian is a cringe if you are a Bulgarian. Languages that are close to our own tend to be and sound easier and more familiar, both the grammar as well as the vocabulary. And what does this close mean? I'm speaking that that language that you want to learn is a part of your familiar language family, an important part of understanding what languages are all about. Now in this lecture we're going to talk about some of the main language families of the world and what they meant to you in terms of learning words and grammar. You're going to end up learning a lot of words in whatever language you're thinking up. As you will understand the language families, you are going to make your process of learning the new language easier. It may even tell you some things about the language that we are communicating right now, the English. All languages in the world are related to some other language or languages, and they can all be divided up into large groups or families. Most European languages derive from a common heritage, from a very large language group or family called the Indo-European. You may heard of it, it's called the Sanskrit, which was written many thousands of years ago in India. And why would you need this information? Well, there is a good chance that you are learning a language from the Indo-European language family. And like all families, this one is divided into several distinct branches. So the Indo-European languages are subdivided into the main subfamilies. And here they are. Roman, Germanic, Slavic, Indic, Iranian and Celtic, and few others such as Greek and Albanian. The first group called the Roman or the Romans, it has nothing to do with the romantic interest by the way, it comes for the word Roman, simply because these languages are developed from Latin, the language of the ancient Roman Empire. And the main modern language in this group are the French, the Italian, Romanian, Spanish and Portuguese. These are the languages that have been developed when the Latin speakers of the Roman Empire became isolated in their own areas after the empire fall apart. The Latin of those isolated groups were eventually being corrupted or evolved into these variation modern forms of Latin. So basically, people once speaking a common language gradually grew apart over hundreds of years until their language began to be rather distinct from one another. This is not a history lesson, but I want to make sure and clear why there are close relationships amongst all these languages. And if you are familiar with one of the Roman languages group, then you will find it relatively easy to learn another one from this group. The grammars are not very different and there is a high proportion of words that you will be recognized in each of these languages. This basically means that with a minimum amount of work, you can speak and read very quickly the language from this group. Now on to the second group which is called the Germanic. These languages are derived from the common Germanic ancestor, branching off from the early Indo-European prototype. And the languages are the German, the English, Dutch, Icelandic, Norwegian, Danish, Afrikaan, a form of Dutch, and the Swedish. And again, as with the previous group of languages, if you know one of the Germanic languages, it makes a lot easier to learn the others. There will be big similarities in grammar and vocabulary, and some will be closer to each other than others. As you may have now noticed, the languages in the same family are located geographically near one another. For instance, Norwegian and Swedish are much closer than the German and English. The next group is Slavic and also same principles with this group as with the previous one. So for the Slavic countries we have first Russian, we have Baltic and Balkan countries, and we have Ukrainian, Czech, Slovakian and Polish. 
and we are going to skim the other groups. The Indic languages are large groups of languages in the area of India and Pakistan. Iranian languages mainly cover Iran and Afghanistan, and the Celtic languages are mainly referred to Irish, Scottish, Gaelic, and Welsh. Now let's have a glimpse into English language and where does it fit. As I already have mentioned, the English belongs to the German language family, so English grammar is unmistakably a Germanic in characters, but the vocabulary of English has a lot of Romance language words in it. And a little bit of more history, why is that? Because the Normans from the France invaded and occupied England in the 1066 and they imposed thousands of French words upon the very Germanic English of the day. Even more, they imposed the basic French system of creating new words, the more intellectual, philosophic, cultural, scientific and abstract words from Latin and the Greek roots. So, as a result, the English language, starting in about the 14th century, began to reflect not only the old Germanic vocabulary, but also heavily influenced with the new elements of French, which, as we saw, derived from the Latin. And the Germanic grammar of English had also grown vastly simpler. So now the English language has a huge vocabulary with words from both Romans and Germanic sources, and one of the biggest advantages of having English as your native language, or that you have already learned it, is that you have a head start in learning either Germanic or Romance language. You will recognize a lot of the basic Germanic vocabulary and feel somewhat comfortable with the grammar of Germanic languages, and you will recognize the roots of thousands of words in Romance language as well. In the next lecture, I'm going to give you a list of concrete examples and what the similarities mean in practice. So now you have some basic information of what experts are talking about when they say that this or that language is related. When the language you are learning is related to one you already know, your task is much easier. You can also begin to understand why people have already learned a number of languages generally find it reasonably easy to go on and learn several more. I have to mention it always involves work, but it becomes easier when you have experience and friends among several different language families. The more languages you learn, the better you get at spotting connections in your mind to help you remember. And anything that helps you remember a word is a fair game.